we can pray and all take us to the throne of grace. Something to eat, 
I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did you then when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Then the king will cry, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of man, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, parted for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or needing clothes, or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for me of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. There ended a portion of reading of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, from Job 14 uh, and I will be reading all of it. A man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and is cut down. He flees also as a shadow and continueth not. And thus then open thine eyes upon to such and one and brightest mind in the judge with thee. Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Not one. Seeing his days are determined, the numbers of his months are with thee. Those has appointed his bonds that he cannot pass, turn from him that he may rest, till he shall accomplish as an hurling his days, for there is hope of a tree, and it to be cut down, that it will be sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Thus the root, therefore, walks holding the earth, and the stock, therefore, die in the ground. Yet though the scent of water will bud, and bring forth Brots like plants. But men die and waste it away. Yes, men give it up to thy ghost, and where is he? As for the water falls from the sea, and the food decays and dieth and dries up, so man lies down and rises up. So Till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake, nor be rise out of their sleep. Or that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me in secret until thy wrath be passed. Thy thou holdest appoint me a set time and, remind, and remember me, if a man die, shall he live again. All the days of my life, all the days of my appointed time, will I wait till my change come 
Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou is have a desire to the work of thine hands, for now thy numbered my steps, though that not watch over my sin. My transgression is sealed in a bag, and thou swingest up my iniquity, and surely the mountain falling cometh to night, and the rock is removed out of his place. The water where the stones thou washest away, the things which grow out of the dust of the earth, and thou destroy the hope of man. Thou privilege forever against him, and he passeth. Thou changest his contents, and sendeth him away. His son come to honor, and he knoweth it not. And they are brought low, but have preserved it not of them. But his flesh upon him shall have pain, and his soul within him shall mourn. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Thanks for the announcement. For those wishing to use the restroom, after you have to show the door on my head, it's the first door on your right. And for the male restroom, you'll we'll continue down, and it's those two doors also on my right. So you can't miss it. We we'll now have some tributes. And our first tribute will be done by Mr. Douglas Conley. If that will be followed by Delores Williams and Rodney Hart. Affectionately, affectionately known is the father that I didn't have in Jamaica that I did have in Jamaica while my biological father was away in England if I should tell you something this man along with his wife mother you don't know the difference between her children and us as nieces and nephews. I can speak for myself, I can speak for my two daughters down there, and I can also speak for Philip. They treated them as their own. They treated me as their own. And as I was reminiscing during the past week, I remember that my uncle owned a bike and he had a special style of sitting on his bike and changing the gear the gears and I was looking at it lying down in my bed but when I came today and I saw the the um, motorcade with the bike I said yes man this is my support this is my stand let me tell you something about him he was as plain as Paki. And I don't know if I have taken a bit of that from him. But you could tall like a papa tree. I have to tell you the truth. Whether you like it or not, that is June as she's known. I'm not afraid to tell you. And today, we are not here to mourn the death of our uncle. And what I want to encourage the congregation today is that we are here on repentance ground. If you have not yet known the Lord as your Savior and Lord, now is the time. Tomorrow might be too late. And I give you an instant. It was only Wednesday night a young man was killed in my community 
where I am living in Seaford. It is now referred to as a shutter town. By 7 o'clock, my community closed down. You understand? And I spoke to that young man. He was baptized some years ago. And when I was speaking to him, he said to me, Teacher, you know, so the same day when I come to church and baptize me, just kill a man. I say, really? Well, now that you are all, you went and did your time and come back. Now is the time for you to commit your life to the Lord. He looked at me and he said, teacher, you know what you When it was after one Wednesday night that he was killed, rumor has it that it's two different sets of persons kill him. I wasn't there, so I can't go with it. But what I'm saying to us all today, now is the time to seek the Lord. And maybe you might be saying, then who Ajun, she, we mean who from Rock Spring. Ajun! And whom the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. God bless you. Good evening, everyone. But I was not much more as it sounds quite a lot. So many salary rooms will not be the same for that same one. May I do win? And what he rages? And the pills begin to roll.
followed by Princess Percy. Members of the clergy, families, friends, everyone, good afternoon. I was following the program and um, I was actually not ready as yet, but I was called, and especially when you're in the house of the Lord and you're called, you must be ready. So I am the niece. And 
Certainly, once he's there, they would get their bulla with red herring and bad juice. And also, that was a welcome snack as we make our way home until we get to Uncle Pat's. It was always given that once we see Uncle Ten, food was available. I also enjoyed his roast yam. This would be available at his home. So if we didn't find him at any of his watering hole spots, Uncle Ten would be at his home and he would have roast yam. And he always, always have ripe bananas. One can also never forget that Uncle Ten has an unconventional way of disciplining his boys. And he and my dad would get into arguments frequently about his method, having to heed to the cries of Eric and to a lesser extent Milton and Godfrey bawling for Uncle Cooley to come and save them from Uncle Ten grass. The argument would always end with Uncle Ten stating, Missu move on if you on no My mother was especially fond of Uncle Ten. As in her own words, she would say, I want to be ten, him a hypocrite. <laughs> Everyone knows that Uncle Ten never means words and never minded to be tactful. What you see is what you get. Like his brother, Uncle Pat, who sojourned before him, I can hear Uncle Pat, Uncle Ten saying, don't feel sad for me. I do not feel sad for myself. I lived the life I wanted to, had a few best friends. I love the people I want to love, and I still love them. Now the next adventure awaits in uncharted territory, and I'm excited for it to begin. Go well then, my Uncle Ten. Go well.
winner of her Titan by Yolanda and Company, followed by Errol Moss and then Richard. support. Good afternoon. 
not so sure if mine is a remembrance or a tribute, but I want to call it a remembrance. I'm Errol Moss, son-in-law of Uncle Ten, as I call him. Uncle Ten, as was mentioned before, I have known him for 24 years. And he has been the same Uncle Ten from the first day we met. When I was introduced to him as, er, as his son-in-law to be. The same Uncle Ted. And someone mentioned it before. There's no hypocrisy about him. Who you see is what you get. And over the years, he's someone who don't speak much. But whatever he said is solid. And sometimes it requires a lot of thinking to figure out when you ask him for clarity, when I ask him for clarity, he has a phrase that he always uses, I am a son. That is how he answered to give me the clarity, which means I have to figure it out myself. I want to share with you probably about three of them. I remember on the day of my, of my wedding, and by the way, Uncle Ten, Birthday is my wedding anniversary. So I don't know if it's coincident. It wasn't planned, but it's also the birthday of my sister, 26th of September. He said to me, Mr. Moss, my wife is the only person, only sister in his family that is married. And I am the one who married to her. And I have two daughters and you married to one of them. I asked him what that meant and he said, oh, I am his son. But over the years I recognized that he was saying that both of us are very lucky and blessed very special and I realized that is what he was saying that man you're very lucky if you get my daughter <laughs> I remember when phone just came in I don't know if it was my wife or it was Annette but phone was bought for mother and they said to Ten, the next trip, we are going to get you a phone. And Uncle Ten says, telephone mash up life. <laughs> and like how you all laughed, we did that a laugh that day. But I have grown to see that fulfilled. Telephone mash up marriages. Telephone cause people to lose their lives. They are out on vacation and they're shooting live activities. People go out and rob, breaking their houses. They are hiding, but they are on social media and the gunman find them and kill them. Telephone indeed has been mashing up lives. Husband cutting the throats of their wives and killing themselves because of telephone. Children can't write essay again. Can't write a letter again because of telephone. So I have seen that Uncle Ten fulfill telephone mash up life. Don't make it mash up your life. Christmas is here, and everybody around the dinner table with phone. We can't even sit down around the dinner table and have a meal and a good conversation anymore. Telephone, mash up life. 
And the third thing that Uncle Ten said to me, that I really and truly can't forget. And in sick bed, I went to look for him at the hospital. Really want to commend the family for their support during his sickness. But I have to highlight Godfrey. Godfrey was there every day visiting him and giving him the support. When I went there, he said to me, the son, you're not coming out, you know. You're not going to make it. And I said to him, don't worry, God is able. There is nothing impossible with him. He complained about the nurses making noise in the night and the, and the, and the other patients. And I said to him, don't worry about the noise. Keep your heart in tune with the Lord. And then I started to repeat, repeat some scriptures to him that he can use to keep his heart in tune. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And I paused and Uncle Ten took it right to the end. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And I paused and Uncle Ten Took it to the end. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. O ye lands. O give thanks unto the Lord. And all the verses of scripture that I quoted. Uncle Ten was able to chip in and finish it. And that in my mind. I honestly didn't know that he knew his Bible that well. But. That in, my, that in my mind tells me that he was in tune with his Lord and was ready to go home. I really going to miss him. He's my domino partner. And his brother, I think, died earlier. Who was also, we usually play domino together. But as I said to my wife, Sickness unto death is no disgrace. No gunman never shoot him. He never met no accident with some careless driver. And he died suddenly. Sickness has no respect of any one of us. And he's sick. He went in the hospital. He has time to make it right with his God. So I know. I believe that he has made it right with his God. He's someone who was very proud of his son-in-law. When I went there, I saw him not lying down so good. And I asked the nurse to assist me and the porter to get him, raise him up on the bed and set him properly. And as I went there with the nurse, he was there telling the nurse, He's my son-in-law that, you know. He's my son-in-law that, you know. And you know, he wouldn't come off of it. And, you know, I was able to raise him up, give him some supplements that his wife had asked me to buy for him. And we prayed. And, you know, we say goodbye. So, Uncle Ken, I want to thank you, you and mother, for producing... A gem of a woman, Beverly Cadley, and allow me the opportunity to put mass on it. <laughs> and just one last thing, and then I finish, okay? As I talk about my wife and mother. 
Uncle Ten taught me one more thing. That one day, one, one of, in one of our visits, he came in one night and had his tea, went to his bed, we went to our bed. And all of a sudden he started. B! We love you! B! We love you! And then, you know, mother responded, probably I tell him, say, be quiet because, you know, we have family members there and say, I oh, will tell mother to go tell him that. B! We say, we love you! And I mean, he went on for at least, I'm not exaggerating, at least an hour. B, we love you. And I am saying, that tells me that husbands must tell them wife, say them love them. Wife must tell them wife. Children must tell them mother and father. This once you are alive, look on your loved ones and tell them that you love them because you never can tell if this is the last chance you get. So, Roxanne, we love you. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Richard is the name. Um, I'm not so familiar with most people here, but Wayne, as you know him, we call him Termite. Yeah. We work together on the CM farm, Canada, and things up. My friend, the man's a little something, but unfortunately, Rodney, Corey, as well. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Loving and eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we give you praise and we give you honor for your goodness and your tender mercy towards us. We thank you, O oh God, that you have blessed us with these gifts as we give to the furtherance of your kingdom. May it use to the glory and the honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We now have the eulogy. Game of domino was getting hot. 
It was the question of each partner. Partner, how you stay? You want me to play for you? How you stay? As they would be beating to juice of Ray and his nephew. He was a jovial and dramatic person. A lover of his juice. Not cherry juice, not guava juice, but his juice. He was a lover of his bush. We're talking about a very special bush. Yes, the same bush Bob Marley was famous for. Behari embarked on his journey. Oh, sorry. Behari embarked on his new journey by bearing his own life to start a new covenant with the Lord, where he got baptized in the year 2000 at the Spring Garden Seminary. He was an average Sabbath keeper of the gospel for 21 years. He took hill on August 18, 2022, and, and was taken to the Spalding Hospital where he was treated and released. His condition seemingly was making some progress, but took a turn for the worse in October. He was later admitted on October 30, 2022, where his illness got worse, it was believed he knew his time was near and requested that he was sent home where he could die in the comfort of his home. But his health did not permit him to be at home as he wished. Behara made his transition on October 21, 2022 at 10.50 p.m. In the midst of life, there is death. And according to Ecclesiastic 3, verses 1 and 2, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to born and a time to die. Behera Kali is now with his maker. May his soul rest in peace. He leaves behind to mourn his death, his beautiful wife of 52 years, Ivy May, children Eric, Annette, a son, Godfrey Milton, Jacqueline, and Roxanne, 20 grandchildren, 14 great grandchildren, three brothers, three sisters, nieces, nephews, a host of other relatives and friends. I thank you. We now have Mr. Ryan Campbell with his hand. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Sometimes it's hard to want 
often not cause us to enjoy beautiful Rome unless we are one of these. Good afternoon, everyone. Indeed, we want to give thanks for the presence of the Lord in this place. I must commend you. Why am I commending you? I sit and I look. Everybody sitting attentively. As if you are in a church. I've been to some funerals and people walking all over. At this time, especially when the eulogy done before the sermon, the church would almost empty. I can see that you are showing your last respect. I want to say thanks to Elder Bernie for his kind words of introduction. And I will he used one of my favorite songs. I didn't plan to start with it today, but since I didn't mention it, I will stop it. <laughs> if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hand, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart. Nobody lived in 
the male and the female, and of these that are not clean by two, male and female. And often times people say, God, we make no man clean. But here it is in the Bible.
Many Africans are repentant because your destiny would have been sealed for, for time and for eternity. Either hell or heaven. Where will you be when the door is shut? Will you be on the outside or will you be on the inside? It is the job of yours. Judgment is surely coming. Coming for you and me. We will be Brothers and sisters, we need to 
make our call and attention sure today. For it says, Today we are my voice, I not your heart. At this time, the congregation will stand, the family of the deceased will remain seated while prayer is offered by Elder Miller. Congregation is stand.
If you live in a glass house, don't just turn. And if you can't take blow, not just blow. Zion people, if you live in a glass house, don't just turn. So come here, if you can't take blow. I'm the one who never nobody had you. I'm the one who never nobody had you. I'm the one who never nobody had you. I'm the one who never nobody. If you're living a glass house, don't you stop. And if you can't take love, don't you. If you're living a glass house, don't just go. And if you can't let go, don't just go. I'm the one who don't have nobody to have you. I'm the one who don't have nobody to have you. I'm the one who don't have nobody to have you. I'm the one who don't have nobody to have you. If you're living a glass house, don't you know? And if you can't take love, don't you know? If you're living a glass house, don't you know? And if you can't. If you're living 